So I will call this meeting to order and maybe we'll have another person join us, but we're so excited to have our guests with us. Thank you so much for being here, Shanley and Lucas. I am going to throw the meeting over to our Sergeant at Arms, Mr. Rob Titt. Thank you, Madam President. If everyone would please mute themselves, focus on my voice and my screen. And repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Back to you, Madam President. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate that. And we are going to have as our Toastmaster tonight, kicking things off, Mr. Eric Stepper. This is how we give a hand here. <laughs> so feel free to give jazz hands. Take it away, Eric. Thank you. Tonight's meeting, the theme of the meeting is Halloween. How appropriate is that? I'd like to welcome Lucas and Shane Lee to our meeting tonight. There's one change. Steve was en route and he was in monitor, didn't think he was gonna make it. So Joyce will be our timer tonight. And we'll see if uh, she still has the F-bomb around somewhere. All right, so our general evaluator tonight is Mary Syrie. Mary, will you tell us what's going on, please? Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster Eric Stepper. I am the general evaluator for the night. And the purpose of having a general evaluator is, well, to evaluate everything that takes place during the meeting. The, at the core of Toastmasters is trying to improve our leadership skills and our communication skills and our speaking skills. You have to know where to improve in order to get better. And that's the purpose of the evaluation team. I have four people on my team tonight, a speech evaluator, the timer, the grammarian, and the awe counter. So we'll step through each one of these for the benefit of our guests, Shanley and Lucas, to explain what the team does. And we'll start with the speech evaluator, and that is Pat Whitfield. Pat. Yes, I'll be evaluating Jackie's speech. This is her icebreaker speech from her new pathway, which is humorous communication. She has four to six minutes to complete her speech. Regretfully, I have not been able to dredge up the criteria specifically for this speech, but one of the things that we'll certainly be looking for is that it is indeed humorous, and her goal is to have a lot of fun with this speech. So let's look for fun. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Pat. Performing her favorite role tonight is our very own Joyce Matheson. And Joyce will now explain to everyone how the timing works. Joyce? I will explain. I would like to welcome our guests, Shanley, Lucas. Nice to meet you. The reason why we have a timer is have you ever been to a meeting where the person who is supposed to be speaking goes on and on to the point where you're thinking, if I feign unconsciousness, they could probably drag me out and I can leave. We decided, the Toastmasters have decided to put in a timing system so that you learn to pace yourself and time yourself to the point where you can pretty much tell when your speaking time is up and people will not crawl under the desk army style to get away from you. As for the timing, we have a system at my house. It's a two ply system. You'll understand in just a moment. I will go through the timing first. We will go with the speech 
uh, for Jackie, which is four to six minutes. Am I right? All right. At the end of four minutes, we have the green toilet paper. This is to show the shortage of the toilet paper that we were going through. And well, again, after that, when we get to the end of five minutes, we go mellow yellow. As for before I got my beloved F-bomb, this would be big red. This would go six minutes. Now I have my little toy. This means finish up your thought, F for finish. At that time, we will go to table topics. One minute after one minute, we have green. One and a half minutes, yellow. And two minutes, finish. After we finish with that, we will have Pat give her evaluation. After two minutes, it will be green. Two and a half minutes, mellow yellow. And after three minutes, we finish the thought. Thank you very much. Good job. As usual, Joyce, thank you. Joyce mentioned table topics. That's a chance for extemporaneous speaking so that everyone has an opportunity to speak. More on that later. Our next team member is the grammarian and that's Rob Tidd. Rob, what are you gonna to do tonight for us? Thank you, uh, Madam General Evaluator. We are actually gonna do something a little bit different because our clubs are on the cutting edge here at Toastmasters. But before I introduce that idea, what I do as the grammarian is I track the proper use and ghoulish misuse of the English language. And I report at the end of the meeting to let people know what they did so wonderfully or could have improved during the course of this meeting. One of the other things that I do is I introduce a word of the day. We're not gonna have a word of the day today. <clears throat> Pardon me. We are going to have a concept which people are going to put into play today. And if I can share my screen, the concept is the use of an oxymoron. Now an oxymoron is a combination of contradictory words such as cruel kindness, or as Joyce said, beloved F-bomb, that is made up of contradictory elements. Other examples, Betty and Veronica share a love-hate relationship with each other. We agree to disagree on certain things as soon as we said our wedding vows. Or the deafening silence between us is driving me crazy. So we're going to see how spontaneous people can be in using oxymorons, and I will report at the end of the meeting. Back to you, Madam General Evaluator. Well, that's very creative. It reminds me of the time that instead of a word of the day at a, another club, it was Latin phrases, et cetera. That kind of stuff, that was really fun. Final member of our team is the awe counter tonight. That's Ian Adams. Ian. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. My job tonight as the awe counter will be to keep track of all the filler words that we're all so guilty of injecting into our daily speech, especially when we get lazy and comfortable talking with friends, coworkers, folks like that. A lot of, a few examples of filler words are ah, uh, um, but like, er, well, and some other words. People will just interject some random noises and things like that that will just tally as other tonight. At the end of the evening, I'll report back to this group so we can be aware of the types of words that we're commonly dropping into our day-to-day -day language, and hopefully we can learn something from it. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. Great. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, team. And during the meeting, for my part, I'll be taking notes on everything that happens and happens well, and if we forget things or things don't happen, I'll mention those as well, and we will all report back at the end of the meeting. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Ms. General Evaluator. 
Our next speaker is Jackie Grayville. We've known Jackie for almost a year now. We followed her all the way from her journey out of an abusive marriage to living in jolly old England, as Pat and Christina would say, only much better. But are there more surprising stories to tell? Here with the answer is Jackie Graybill with her speech, Moments, Moments and Jackie Graybill. Apparently you have to unmute. Our lives are made up of moments. Moments are those things in our minds where when someone asks us, can you think of a time when, and your mind flashes to that moment. I'm going to share with you three moments of which I am very proud and grateful for. I was sitting in her office and I said, what did you say? I, I thought I had heard her wrong because there was no way that she could be saying to me what she had just said. Can you say that again? I was sitting in the office of my voice coach at Highline Community College. And she just said to me in the middle of our voice lesson, Jackie, why have you never thought about being involved in pageants. Pageants. I was 22. I, we're, we're talking about voice here. Pageants, what do you mean? And she said, if you're involved in pageants, the Miss America program, you will learn things that you can use in your life that you don't have now. So I thought, well, I'll just check it out. Fast forward, and I'm standing on a stage my first pageant being crowned first runner up. I thought, I, I like this. This is, this is pretty cool. Okay. I, I think I could continue with this because what if I could actually win a pageant? I learned so much through my journey with the Miss America program. I learned how to speak. I would go into schools and speak on relationships and on boundaries for my platform issue, the choice to wait. It forced me to think about what I really thought about certain issues and to voice what I thought about those issues. When I was 24, I was almost ready to age out. There was one more pageant that I could possibly be involved in before I was going to age out. It was a sweeper pageant. And this meant you had to be in either winner or runner up of a previous pageant. And I had been first runner up. I was going to age out and I gave my all to this thing. I was waiting there as they called the first title. There was two titles being called. Didn't, didn't surprise me at all who won. She was a former Miss California. And then I heard it and I thought that this has to be a mistake because today is April Fool's Day and I'm contestant 13. But they didn't make a mistake. They called my name after they handed this piece of paper to the announcer and I was crowned with this. In that moment, I thought, if I can do this, what can't I do? Fast forward several years later and I was acting in Seattle. I got the role of Marvel Ann in Psycho Beach Party. The only problem was I had to wear a bikini on stage and I no longer had those ab lines that I had at Miss Washington. My boyfriend at the time said, well, you know, I'm training for a triathlon. Why don't you come running around the block with me? I did and it was horrible and painful and awful. 
So naturally, I decided to run a 5K. And I finished it and I thought, huh, I wonder if I can run a 10K. And I finished that and I thought, huh, I wonder if I can run a half marathon. And I finished that and I thought, could I do a marathon? Fast forward and I'm crossing the finish line of the rock and roll marathon in Seattle. Took me five hours and 48 minutes, but I got to wear this around my neck. And I thought, if I can run that, what can I do? I had planned a marathon in Ireland later that fall, but suddenly it felt like I was running like a turtle through peanut butter. And I ended up being ill for the next 10 months. But that illness got me still and quiet long enough for me to think what I was most passionate about, which I realized was singing. So I decided to move to Nashville, Tennessee. I had no idea what I was going to do. I didn't know anybody there. I didn't have a job. But I packed my bag and I went. And on that plane, I met a producer. And that producer said, you know what? I'm working on this project for the Wounded Warrior group. And it's a 10-year anniversary album. I just had somebody drop. Would you like to come in in two days? And I say, yes. So in two days, I was in the studio. And when I heard my voice back over those speakers, I realized... I was not like one of those American Idol contestants who was horrible. And I had the thought, this feels like Christmas. And I went on to produce two albums and multiple singles. And in that moment, in that studio, I thought, what can't I do? I want to ask you, I know you have those moments. And I would love to hear them in the future in your speeches because I know there's nothing you can't do. Thank you. Great job, Jackie. Thanks. Amazing. Ivor, can we please have a minute? One minute. Everybody get, get in the chat box and write down a review of Jackie and some of your thoughts what you liked, what may be improved. That is one minute. Thank you, Joyce. Please wrap up your comments. We are now at the point of our meeting of practicing our impromptu speaking. Tonight's Table Topics Master with the theme of Halloween is Christina Stepper. Thank you, Mr. Postmaster. Table Topics, as Mary mentioned, is the portion of the meeting where everyone who doesn't have a major speaking role gets the opportunity to answer an impromptu question. The answers need to be between one and three minutes, one and two minutes, par pardon me. I'd like to first ask Shanley and Lucas if you are interested in participating. I'll ask 
questions of a number of the regular members first so you can see how it all works. You can think about it. As we get into it, I'll ask you again later if you would like to. Lucas, you up for it? Good, okay, excellent. I will not pitch you a tough question. Okay, great, thanks Shanley. All right, Halloween, Halloween, as Lloyd put it on our agenda this week, a little bit of history. Several thousand years back, Halloween was the night before the celebration of All Saints Day or Holy Day, AKA Hallowed Day. Traditionally, celebrations began the evening before any big event, and thus Halloween. I guess now we could say Christmas Eve, couldn't we? Or Christmas Eve, same deal. Sometime later, the Celts came to the belief that the boundary between the worlds of the living and the dead were blurred on Hallowed Eve, and thus the spooks and ghosts part of it came into play. 2020 continues to throw us curveballs. This year on Halloween, the moon will be full and we change our clocks back to standard time. The first question deals with the time change. Washington state has applied to remain on daylight savings time once we change again next spring. Are you in favor of that, Lloyd? This would probably be better if I'm not muted. Thank you, Mrs. Or Madam Table Topics Master. I have mixed feelings about daylight savings time. I'm not sure why, but I don't have much trouble adjusting back and forth between them after one or two days. I know lots of people do, however, and uh, I feel sorry for them. However, I, I think it probably would be best to stick with just one. Uh, it would have two advantage, one system, one either daylight or non-daylight time, whichever. Uh, I think there would be two advantages. One would be that the, the massive confusion every year would stop. Uh, the, the daylight time switch does cause some troubles in technical industries, for example, making all the equipment work together well. The other big advantage would be that it would stop people from griping about it. You know, we've, been, we've spent decades listening to people bitch and moan about the switch back and forth between daylight time. It's not worth complaining about, but that sure doesn't stop people from doing it. So I personally would, would I guess on balance, prefer to see us stick with one or the other. Daylight time's as good as non-daylight time. Madam Table Topics Master. Thank you, Lloyd. Moving on to questions about Halloween. Thinking back to your youth or perhaps last year, what was your all-time favorite costume that you wore, Ian? Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master. That's a tough question. I can't think of anything that really, really stands out in my memory. I do recall about third grade, Karate Kid was the movie to watch. And I wanted to be the Karate Kid for Halloween. For some reason, my parents, I know the reason now, my parents were poor. <laughs> At the time, I wasn't sure why the reason, or what the reason was, but my mom brought me home a gi to wear, which is the traditional uniform that somebody in a karate match would wear and my gi instead of being white like the karate kid was going to wear was red we made it work my mom made me a bandana 
he with a sharpie drew in red to match my red gi the symbol that was very similar to what the main character whose name is escaping me right now from the karate kid war i wouldn't say that was my favorite halloween costume by any stretch of the imagination but it's one that stands out in my mind that was a fun one i got to be what i wanted it wasn't quite exactly the way i envisioned it but it was close enough and i'm sure i had a great halloween thank you madam table topics master Thank you, Ian. It is a little hard to remember back to what we were as children, isn't it? And things like The Karate Kid, every year there's a movie that causes that character to show up at the front door numerous times. <laughs> Fun to look forward to it. If you could actually become what your costume represents, just for Halloween night, what costume would you choose, Rob? Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master. Let me first say, this time of year is a difficult time for me. Before I was born, my parents thought it would be really neat to have a child born on Halloween. Kind of a macabre sense of humor, if you ask me. <laughs> there I was, all eight pounds, three ounces of me, fighting against grown adults who are trying to pull me out and I'm pushing back because I did want to be a Halloween baby. And fortunately, some divine intervention happened and I wasn't born until the next day because they wanted me to be born on All Saints Day. So my parents didn't get their wish, but I got my wish. So then my parents decided, well, what are we going to name him now that he's born on All Saints Day? We can't give him the name of a saint. My parents with their macabre sense of humor said, well, what's, what's a character in history that we've always admired? And my parents decided they would name me Robert the Bruce, but they dropped the. So my name is Robert Bruce because they thought we were Scottish. Come to find out, I don't have a lick of blood of Scottish blood in my body. I'm English. Therefore, it was a confuse, it's always a confusing time for me at this time of year. And so I don't really think much about costumes or candy. Really, it's kind of a, a version of some hanophobia, if you know what that is. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master. Thank you, Rob. That certainly gives us the long and the short of it. Mark that down, please. Lucas, does that give you an idea how this all works? Would you like to try a question now? Yeah, I would love to all try. Right. Halloween and haunted houses go hand in hand. Are you a fan of haunted houses? Uh, thank you, Madam Table Topics Master. I, I am a fan of haunted houses, except for the haunted houses that are too scary. And I never, <laughs> I never thought that I, I thought, I never thought that I was scared of haunted houses. I always thought that they were, you walk through them and somebody jumps out once or twice and scares you until last year when I went to a haunted house in Kashmir and we were going through this haunted house and I walked into the first room and the lights were black. And I was walking through this room with my wife, Alyssa 
And all of a sudden, I heard a chainsaw right be behind my ear. And it wasn't a fake chainsaw. It was a real chainsaw. I could hear it at the gas engine roaring. And I literally jumped out of my pants and ran into the next room. And in the next room, I was walking through and it was a, it was a barn. And there was a woman that had uh, lipstick all over her face. And she kept walking over to me, staring at me. And she leaned in and kissed me right on my cheek. And at that point, I freaked out. I have never had a Halloween or a haunted house experience like that. And that's why I like haunted houses as long as they're not too scary. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master. Thank you, Lucas. Very well done. Thanks. Fun story too. Stanley, would you like to give it a try? you're muted. Yeah, I am. Thank you very much. Sure, I would ha ha happily give it a try. Thank you. Another October tradition, apparently, because I'm seeing this on TV and Netflix and Prime all the time now, is scary movies. What is the scariest movie you have ever seen? Madam Table Topics Master, I do not do scary movies. <laughs> I am a, a Cinderella, Mary Poppins kind of girl. So I tried to watch The Wizard of Oz when I was about 12 years old. Didn't make it through it. I don't do Walking Dead. I don't do birds. I don't do anything scary. So I probably would say I did finally make it through Wizard of Oz when I was maybe 16, 18 years old. It took a few tries, but I'll go with Wizard of Oz. That's that's as, as scary as I get. So that could be kind of a bittersweet thing, you know. I I like I like to be happy. I like to go to bed and have sweet dreams. <laughs> so that is what I have to say about that. Thank you. Madam. Very good. I'm right there with you. I don't do scary movies either. I, Wizard of Oz is about the top of my limit as well. Tell us about trick-or-treating when you were a child, Joyce. Bob, can you time? I was about to ask. I'll wait till Rob's ready. Thank you, Miss Topics Master. When I was a little girl, we would go trick or treating. We being my myself, my brother, and my three cousins. We had one tradition that stayed through the whole season of us being young enough to trick-or-treat was my father drove. If we wanted to go more than three houses, we had better have had at least one person get a fun-sized Snickers bar. If we did not get that Snickers bar and give it to my dad, he would threaten to take us home. I never figured out whether or not he was bluffing. My dad is the best bluffer I know but every year until we were too old to trick-or-treat we would take turns giving my dad the fun size snicker bar so he would take us to one more house come to think of it I think he saved us a lot of calories but that was the tradition we had, along with the plastic mask that you couldn't breathe out of, which I believe is a precursor to 2020. I believe we were being trained. We would have the happy medium of not being able to breathe and paying people to drive us places. That is near and dear to my demented little heart. Thank you. 
snicker bars very rarely make it to the door at our house <laughs> to go out to the little trick-or-treaters who come by. Oftentimes they get squirreled away into the private stock of person answering the door who shall remain nameless. If you could change the official color of Halloween from orange to another color, what color would you choose, Mary? The only option, if we can't have orange, is to go to the other side of the color wheel and take purple. Purple is the color of the night. It's also, I think, a spookier color than orange could ever be. Orange is bright and sunny. It is the color of pumpkins and maple leaves and evokes thoughts of fall. But it's got to be purple. And ooh, how spooky purple looks when it's paired with black as well. What witch wouldn't just feel wonderful with a black dress and maybe a little purple underwear? <laughs> with some lace with it too. What else can I say about purple? I think there's a movie, maybe it's part of the Wizard of Oz where the monkeys all had purple uniforms on that added to that ambiance, that really frightening, friendly moment that little kids love in the movies. Purple reminds me too of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. And for me, that was the scariest movie ever. Movies are scariest when you're just a little taut. And those Walt Disney movies, I'm telling you, the ones that we watched when those older folks were kids, they were frightening. Pinocchio was scared when he was in the whale and he was going to get eaten. And what was the one I was just talking about? Ichabod Crane being chased by a headless horseman. How horrifying. But getting back to the color, if it can't be orange, it's got to be purple. Thank you, Mary. Another movie that comes to mind is Sleeping Beauty, when the prince is fighting the witch and she turns into a massive dragon. Oh, my goodness sake. I didn't let my grandkids watch any of the things we watched when we were little. They're too scary. One final question, and then everyone will have had an opportunity to speak for a good bit of time. I was surprised to see a giant pile of pumpkins outside Safeway in early September, in the sun, no less. Now Christmas decorations are appearing in stores. How far in advance of a holiday season should stores be allowed to begin putting out holiday things. Eric. I would say six days. Not a week. Six days is plenty. It's ridiculous. You go back. I mean, it's, it's good for a laugh. We were always laughing. And Christina used to merchandise women's clothing and we would, it would be January and she would talk about going to, this, to, the, to the merchandising places and picking up bathing suits. And I'm going, what, you know, you, 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 you're gonna get your mind all twisted up and you're gonna ruin yourself thinking that way. It was always very intriguing to me that they thought so far ahead and how can they even predict what's going to be popular. I don't know. I, it just, I, I've gotten to the point now where it doesn't irritate me. I just get a real good laugh out of it. <laughs> Table tabletopics master. Thank you, Eric. I agree. Six days would be plenty. <laughs> There'd be a six day limit after the holiday too to get all that stuff packed up because you know they're just going to bring it out again next year. Not the kind of stuff that generally goes on clearance. 
Jackie, as our speaker, has had a major role. Pat is her evaluator, and she also has a major speaking role tonight. We are just a couple minutes early. However, I am going to wrap this up. I appreciated all of your responses. Neither hot nor cold, right down the middle. Perfectly <laughs> done. Thank you, everyone. I will turn it back to our Toastmaster. Thank you. Thank you, Table Topics Master. Well done. Very good. Nice answers. Everybody stepped right into it. Very impressive. I will ask our evaluator to come up and we will go through the evaluation part of the meeting. Mary Syrie. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, Eric Stepper. Let's get right into the evaluation phase and I will call upon Pat Whitfield to evaluate the speech delivered by Jackie Graybill. Pat? Yes. Well, Jackie's speech was her icebreaker speech from her new pathway, Humorous Communications. I must say, first of all, not surprisingly, Jackie had wonderful facial expressions, body movement, vocal variety throughout her speech. She also established the framework right up front can I think of a time when, and I will give you three examples. So she set our expectations that she was going to share three experiences with us. The first was the pageant, April Fool's Day, in which she got a very good placement. The second was being in a contest and deciding in order to get into shape for it, she should start running marathons. And then she built up to running a marathon and ended up winning a medal for that. She used a neat uh, metaphor. She talked about it being so challenging. It was like running through peanut butter. I've never heard that before. What an image, and I'm going to steal it somewhere along the line because just trying to picture it and how hard that was. Then finally, the trip from Nashville to England. Nashville, of course, is the home of country music here in the US. And then to go to England and end up making albums and other kinds of records, all great achievements. And her closing that there's nothing you can't do if you set your mind to it. I do have one reservation. Perhaps I'm a Luddite, but I thought these were supposed to be humorous. I found them more sentimental than humorous, except for one neat little humorous connections. It was April Fool's Day. I was contestant number 13 and I got a crown and she showed us the crown. That really made me giggle. But from my perspective, that really was the only part that I could identify as being purely humorous. But it was a most entertaining speech, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Pat. And we will move on to the timers report and this will be delivered by Joyce. Here we go, time to unmute and report. Let's start with the table topics. Lloyd, you had one minute, 13 seconds. Ian, one minute, 37 seconds. Rob, you had two minutes, eight seconds. Lucas, you did, let me just take the paper. Here we go. Now my eyes aren't skipping as much. One minute, 40 seconds. Shanley, 55 seconds. I have been reported to spend one minute and 42 seconds of your time. Mary, one minute, 40 seconds. Eric, one minute, three seconds. As for Jackie's speech, 
Her speech time requirement was four to six minutes. You did six minutes and 42 seconds of entertaining speech. I loved it. Was worth every second, I believe so. Pat, your evaluation was two minutes and 45 seconds. That is my report. Okay. Rob. Oh, let's see. Rob has the word of the day, doesn't he? I just wanted to point out that although we're all, except for Eric and Christina, we're all alone and yet we're all together. Now Rob can give his grammarian report. <laughs> Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. Well, that segues right into the first thing I wanted to talk about. We did not have a word of the day, but we had a concept. And Mary led that charge with what she just mentioned, alone but yet together. I thought that was very, very good. Shanley used the word bittersweet, which I thought was spot on. And I don't think anybody liked mine, macabre sense of humor. I thought that that might pique some interest from some people, but uh, it was something that just kind of flowed off the top of my head. As for some colorful language tonight, we seem to have kind of a theme about clothing and certain unmentionables. For example, Eric was talking about bathing suits. Mary was talking about purple underwear. And Lucas, well, Lucas was talking about jumping out of my pants. So there seemed to be a common thread there with uh, clothing being on or off. All said, it was entertaining. I enjoyed it. I look forward to doing this again. And that is my report. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. Thank you, Rob. And finally, we have our awe counter and Ian will report on that. Thank you. We did stellar tonight. I created the sheet at the beginning of the evening and I wrote down a bunch of filler words that I thought might pop up and a few of them did. Lloyd, you had a couple of ahs. That's kind of your typical go-to word. And you had a number of repetitions. Everybody had repetitions tonight with exception of Mary. I didn't catch any repetitions on your part. Jackie, you had some repetitions and what were interesting was the fact that your repetitions were intentional with the exception of one. When you would change your speaking role from the speaker to the person in the chair, learning about a new idea, your, your past self, you, I don't even know how to describe the person that it was, but it was you in the past and you were thinking as somebody was talking to you and you used a couple of repetitions. Again, those were planned, but I thought it was interesting that even though they were planned, they still popped up because you reverted back to your common, comfortable speaking voice. I also noticed that prior to the recording tonight, you had quite a few ahs and a few repetitions as well that were very reflective of just your common, comfortable speaking voice. Just something I'd noticed tonight that I hadn't noticed before. Again, everybody had a few repetitions. The only other kind of standout points were, I wanted to comment on Shamley and Lucas. Both of you did really, really great. There's a repetition on my part, but it was planned as well. Lucas, you had an uh, you had a so, and you had some repetitions. Shamley, you had a so, and you had a couple of repetitions. Overall, everybody did really good tonight. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. Thank you, Ian, and, and thank you for the team. Now for my um, evaluation of the meeting, <clears throat> all the team members were, were well prepared. You all explained your roles well, and I'm sure that Shanley and Lucas got a good idea of how the meeting runs based on your excellent explanations. Now the meeting itself started a couple minutes late, and I know it was suggested to start late, but 
let's um, try to start on time and end on time, especially ending on time. We've sort of been slipping past 6.30 in recent months. And my husband's got dinner going downstairs, so I don't want to be late for that. But it is important to start and end on time. So let's make sure we do that. Rob, your word of the day was really creative. And I, I was worried how you're going to catch those because you didn't get a few of them. I use friendly fright. And I think I heard a few others. So it was a great, yeah, I think Christina had a really good one. I don't think you caught. But that's, you know, the rest of us are keeping track and we'll let you know. <laughs> I, I like the creativity of it. Pat, good evaluation. I too was wondering the same thing. I thought it's an icebreaker speech and she's on a humorous speaking path. So is every speech supposed to be humorous? Probably. And it was a very pleasant speech. And I love the storytelling. Not a lot of laughing out loud. Not like last week when we were treated to Lloyd's frog speech. I'm still laughing at that one. Let me look at my notes here. I think that is all I have to say for our meeting tonight. No, there was one more thing I wanted to talk about and that, that is the Zoom meeting. I want to compliment our clubs because we are handling this very well. We're getting better at muting ourselves when we're not speaking. There's not as many interruptions and blurts. And we're also quite well behaved during the meetings. I've been in some where people are doing rather impolite things forgetting they're on camera and I've never seen that here so what a great well-behaved mannerly bunch of Toastmasters we are thank you I'll turn it back over to the president Jackie thank you Mary and as Lloyd just messaged me privately the this um this particular project didn't have to be humorous. So I didn't really do a good job in conveying that. I don't think <laughs> in general, I wanted it to be fun, but here's what I thought though. I thought y'all were hysterical. And with the rules of timing for our guests, just so we know, the rules are that we're supposed to be either 30 minutes under our, our final time or 30 minutes or 30 seconds. Oh, it's getting to me, it's too late. So six minutes. So it would have been five and a half minutes or six and a half minutes to be right in there. So here's what I suggest because every meeting we do a speaker of the week. And I suggest that because I was 11 seconds over and was disqualified by time that we all vote on table topics on who had the best table topic speech. What do you think? Is that acceptable? Fantastic. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to send those to Rob and he is going to tally those for us. So you can just send them to Rob privately in the chat if you would. And as you are doing that, Lloyd, is there anything that pops up for you as our Vice President of Education? Yeah, I'm not sure how many of you saw the email from the international president, uh, Richard Peck, but TI, the headquarters, has decided to, as kind of a thank you for everybody's patience during the confusion that we've been experiencing for the last eight months, to give every current member another path, a free path. Uh, that's worth 20 bucks, okay? So I, you know, if you were walking along the street and saw a $20 bill, you'd certainly pick it up. So I would definitely do that. Tomorrow in my email, I'll, uh, I, I did it to see what the process involved. And it turns out it's extremely simple. So I'll just put a little blurb on the deal tomorrow explaining how to do it. Even if you haven't started your current path, it doesn't matter. They, you can just pick up the free one. It'll be waiting for you in your base camp. And when you get ready for it, you can. But anyway, it's a freebie for 20 bucks and we probably should all take advantage of it. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Lloyd. We appreciate that. 
Tally counter Rod, have you finished your calculations? I have, Madam President. Tonight was impressive. We had six people garner votes. That's incredible. We have never had that many people actually get votes, but just one winner tonight. Please congratulate Joyce Matheson. Way to go, Joyce. Well, <laughs> oh, me, I didn't think I'd win. Thank That's you. <laughs> That's amazing. Amazing, amazing. We have two minutes left in our meeting and Eric is raising his hand. Yes, yes. Stanley, do you have any questions? Muted, oh, you're, you're muted. Sure, I have seven, several questions, but I, I probably will reach out to Rob directly rather than bore all of you with it, so. Very good, very good. Lucas, do you have any questions? I'll do the same. I'll Very good. Them. Welcome to both of you. Thank you for Thank having you me. Being with us, we really, really appreciate it. You guys are awesome, and awesome speeches too. Cool. All right. If there is nothing else, we are going to close our meeting right on time. All right. Hi everyone. Hi everybody. Have a good week. Hey. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Ugh.